Hello from Wild Food UK here with Kerry today. It's uh, the 2nd of August and uh, it's a sunny day, which isn't great for the mushrooms, but we've had loads of rain recently. Hopefully that will continue through August, which means loads of mushrooms and particularly loads of mushrooms from one pretty complicated genus and that's what we're going to go through today. I've done lots of videos on the different members of this genus that I can ID uh, safely in the field, have a look or ID perfectly to species rather in the field. Um, uh, so have a look in the uh, description below for links to all those videos. Um, but now we're going to go through this lovely group of mushrooms here. The first one we saw was obviously this huge one here. We've got a baby there, a middle-aged one there, and, a, and an adult, I suppose, over there. And uh, from a distance, we could tell pretty quickly that these are mushrooms in the Agaricus genus, which, as I said, is a particularly complicated genus and one that we get so many emails about at this time of year, I thought I'd do a nice longer video to go through all of the features that you need to look for in this family if you want to try and ID them to species and the easy ways to figure out whether they're edible or not. So, Right, so we've got the youngest one down here, Kerry. So let's see what we can find out from this one. Right, this really is a baby, isn't it? Now, at this stage, we can't tell whether or not this could be genus Amanita, which has got some really nasty actors in it, um, or whether this is genus Agaricus. Um, now, if you ever suspect there might be an Amanita going on, uh, you'll be able to tell from the base. So you don't want to slice where you see it. You want to actually excavate it. So not only move the... Uh, detritus and other bits of growth out of the way. Um, were it an Amanita, you'd actually want to slice away from it and kind of lever it out of the ground. Um, from this though, I think we're ruling out any, any vulva going on. Yeah, um, I think we're covering the real basics here. There's... Yeah, this is a nice, uh, you can very much see there's no vulva there, uh, which then tells me that's going to be in Agaricus. Um, it's a baby, but take a look at the size of that. Um, you can see how immature it is from the way, uh, how closely, ca uh, how closed the cup is and the presence of the ring, which tells me that this is going, destined to be a, a big, big mushroom, uh, to be this size at this uh, age. Um, so, now we're on a fact-finding mission um, to work out exactly which species it is. So uh, we want to uh, take a little look here and see if it's got any ornamentation on the base. Now, there's not a huge amount visible on the, uh, the ring there, but you can see, especially on this bit, we've got some ornamentation going on. A little bit of a cogwheel effect, wouldn't you say? Yeah, it looks a bit like it, but would you be able to be totally mm. sure that's a cogwheel? It's not as defined as I would like. Again, that could be down to age, or it could be leading us into a different direction. Yeah. Um, now, another thing you want to look at is the shape of it. You can actually see this is quite a boxy, blocky shape, uh, which could potentially be a sign of the section xanthoderma. Uh, Section xanthodermite, that's a fun word to say, isn't it? Um, the yellow staining. Um, so that could potentially be a poisonous one. Uh, we need to take a look closer okay. though. To me, um, there's already a tiny bit of yellowing on the top here. Little... Do you want to give it a little nick with the yeah. knife? I often just do this. Sign so your name when on I it? first find a mushroom that I know is in the agaricus group, the agaricus genus, I'll just do that with the knife before I even pick it sometimes, just to see if there's any immediate bright yellow staining. Because as Kerry says, at, at this stage, it could be one of how many? Are we maybe six or seven different mushrooms at the moment? One of them certainly toxic, the, the Xanthodermis, the yellow stainer. And there is a bit of yellowing there, isn't there? There's not much. But I don't think from that I could rule out the yellow stainer. There's one other interesting thing on this mushroom though, that's unusual. This, this flocculose base to the stem, that could be a little hint of what this mushroom actually is. 
I think I can see some unusual. a little bit of the scaling on the the cap there too. Um, right, next. So that, that that then is um, pointing possibly towards the crocodilinus, but All right. that one I think is supposed to blush a little bit pink. So. I mean, we're already a little bit confused. Okay, right, well, first things first, um, clean that up, because we don't really want to be taking home a mushroom full of maggots. That's actually in pretty good nick. Um, a little bit of insect activity. And the other reason I'm doing that um, is to see if there's any immediate bright chrome yellow staining at the base as well. That's where, if it were the poisonous yellow stainer, uh, it would be most obvious. Um, now the uh the edible mushrooms in this genus um they've got a variety of different colors or no colors um that they can go from nothing to pink to red uh to dull yellow uh, but the yellow staining uh section they'll stain bright yellow um but uh word of warning if it's been if it's been frosty the night before or if it's been really really dry the chemicals responsible for that that color and scent change uh, they won't be present on especially and especially if it's a bit chilly um your sense of smell's a bit deadened then so uh, you do want to warm warm it up on a cold day uh, to get the best access to that sense of smell but what i'm going to do now okay uh, this, i think i know what this is but um let's uh do that sniff test but look you can see how quite a faint yellowing and it's kind of bruised slightly where I've been handled it, handling it. Let's uh, do a nice bisection there. You can see very faint pink on the gills there, um, almost white, but they will darken to a rich chocolatey brown later. Now look at this, there's um, this staining, would you call that blushing ever so slightly pink or would you call that yellowing? That's yellowing, maybe even a hint of browning, but it's it's nowhere near the immediate chrome uh, chemical colour change that you'd expect from the poisonous section. So I think we can safely rule out, coupled with the scent, I think you'll agree with me here when I give yeah, this to you to smell. Yeah. So you tell me what you're smelling. I think we can safely rule out the poisonous three. Right, we can definitely rule out the poisonous mushrooms now. So for a few reasons, the, we've got the uh, slightly yellow staining and no particularly vivid yellow staining at the base of the stem. Um, it is blushing and it's almost a, a browny, uh, slightly pinkish blush rather than a, a bright yellow blush. Now, what we've ruled out with the colors of the staining, if it doesn't stain, then it's edible. If it stains red or blushes pink, then it's edible. If it goes a little bit yellow, then it might not be. So you have to then use the smell test. And what we've got, we'll probably disagree ever so slightly because smell is subjective, but I'm getting a very sweet anise almondy sort of smell. So it's interesting that you've gone anise or almond because those are actually clearly two different smells. For me, they're very similar though. Right, so... now I'll actually, I'll explain that if you like. Oh, okay. I did a little bit of um, deep dive down the rabbit hole and it's got uh two chemicals in it which smell the same i can't remember the exact chemistry this was a while ago i looked this up um but two chemicals that smell um of i'm going to say anise uh but at certain concentrations and certain ratios of each other a certain percentage of the population quite a large percentage will actually smell the almond scent um so yeah chemistry is a much more complicated subject than i can get my head around um but that's just a nice interesting little tip it's not more there. complicated than foraging maybe it is <laughs> carl would probably disagree with us there um, but the smell all right so you might not subjectively get the uh the anise almond smell that i get you might get a really strong anise kind of smell or you might even get a sweeter uh smell the, than either kerry and, and i have got here or you might get no smell at all in which case you are anosmic and you can't do the smell test but the three different smells that we get from the agaricus group the agaricus genus are either it will smell of uh, nothing or kind of mushroomy like the mushrooms you'll buy in the shops or it will smell edible like almonds or anise or aniseed rather 
or it will smell of a, of a chemical smell, which is um, uh, similar to Indian ink, but most people won't have smelled Indian ink. What, what I can say is that it will smell inedible, is the way that I'll describe it. And that smell, when you stick them in the frying pan, if you are silly enough to bypass all of these little tests that we're giving you now, and you still put a yellow stainer in the frying pan, your kitchen will stink quite horribly of chemicals, or phenolic, I think. I get hospital floors. Described. Hospital floors. Um, if that not makes edible. any kind of sense. Yeah. It's certainly not something that makes me go, mm, yum. Okay. Um, but the, um, a couple of the other tests um, were, uh, it'll really activate with heat. So uh, blast it in the microwave on a, a piece of white kitchen towel um, is one that, that will work, or maybe even the boiling water test. But as, as Marlo says, if you've already uh, sliced it up, somehow not smelt that nasty smell, um, then the heat from frying it up will uh, will activate that. So there's multiple safety levels that you can that you build in if you're paying attention, uh, which obviously you are. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the key thing is though, if we've, we've figured out whether it's edible or not, we can definitely take this home. But can we ID these mushrooms to species, do you think? Let's, oh, let's, I... <laughs> let's try, right? So okay. first of all, we've got a small group of the agaricus that grow in the UK that will get as big as this one. Let's have a look at the bigger one over here, Attila. So there we've got a mature cap which is uh, possibly 20 centimetres in diameter. Now, uh, we, um, I think, Kerry and I, are both leaning towards this possibly being the Agaricus arvensis, because that's the smell I get from the arvensis, a lovely, strong aniseed smell with a sweetness, maybe a, a hint of almond. Is that where you're thinking yeah, it's, this um, one is? That would certainly be my first thought. It's clearly not the prince. It, the smell is uh, not as sweet and strong as the prince, and the uh, the orm ornamentation on the cap is completely lacking for that as well. Now, the books say that the arvensis doesn't get more than 15 centimetres in diameter, though, Kerry. Bearing in mind, the mushrooms don't actually read the same books as we do although i will defer to the experts on this um uh on this matter so uh if you're the size is making you lean away from arvensis um there's a couple of other candidates there is but we're gonna have to get some uh, expertise from behind the camera i right. believe to go much further <laughs> than i do this. the running no, no, he can, uh, he can talk from back there. He quite likes talking from back there, don't you, Attila? Well, I'm much safer behind the camera than in front of the camera, yes. <laughs> so, uh, Agaricus of this size, uh, we're both getting a good aniseed with a, a hint of sweetness smell. Agaricus of this size, with that smell when young, I believe we're, we're ruling out the, the crocodilinus, which used to be the macrosporus and the urinacens, because that one, when it's young, is supposed to smell a little bit of urine. Is that right? Yes, uh, it is. And uh, yeah, my original intention, because of the chunky uh, stem of that big one, uh, was uh, crocodilinus, but uh, I'm going to drop that idea based on all the other ID features. Right, so the crocodilinus will will stain a tiny bit pinkish. But we saw that slightly with this, this stem here. I mean, you guys, what are you seeing on the screen? Is that yellowish or is that pinkish? <laughs> Let us know what you see in the comments. Um, but for me, the smell is ruling out the crocodilinus and also the crocodilinus is supposed to get quite a cracked cap whereas this one where it's not been eaten is a really nice smooth cap which again leans further towards the uh, arvensis but there's another one in the uk isn't there that gets to uh, this size which is uh, the which is osacanus osacanus right now that's not a particularly common agaricus is it but it's uh, one that will grow to this size i believe it will yellow ever so slightly and it will also uh, smell of, of aniseed is that all correct yes as far as i know yes do it we is. have any way of telling the difference between that one and the arvensis is that possible well with that microscopy i would say no and uh, i'm happily acknowledge the limitations of macroscopic id uh -huh. so when uh, you are talking about this kind of giants with white skin no unpleasant chemical smell then 
you know, you are safe to eat, but don't ask me which one is, because that's just a giant agaricus. Okay, right, well, you, you wait there, hold on a second. I'm gonna get this absolute beauty from over here. And here we've got an absolute, oh my goodness, barnstormer of an agaricus mushroom. That is beautiful. And we are seeing a bit of cogwheel there. We are seeing a bit of yellowish even staining on the cogwheel. You often get it there first. A bit of yellowing down at the base. What the are we seeing on well. the cap? Yeah, oh, look, a bit of yellowing on handling, you know. So again, if all we saw was this one and, and we saw it like this, at this size, I would be beginning to think it was getting a bit too big for the Xanthodermis, but like Kerry said earlier, they don't read the same books as us. So have you seen a Xanthodermis this big before? Close, maybe. Yeah, I, uh, I didn't actually measure it, but I, I've seen some... Uh some big fellas <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right let's move on but, uh, <laughs> but the skirt is definitely ruining out uh xanthodermus yeah well so Give don't worry about that no cogwheel on the xanthodermus not as far as i Good can information. remember uh, and also if you can see the stem is pretty much uh smooth there are no flockers there are no granules there are no any extra bit of of uh, fluffy things on a mature one so it also rules out crocodilinus pretty but, much but there were on this one well i looked a little bit different as a baby than i look now so i can explain that easily <laughs> fair enough look at this just to uh, show you there's going to be a lovely pendulous skirt on this mushroom and there's our pink gills, which will end up dark in color, like this one here. And again, just one last time. Oh, this one, I'm just getting straight lovely sweet aniseed. Yeah. Attila, you didn't have a smell. Here you go. Tell us what your nose is getting from that. Yeah, I would call it as a nice kumarin smell, which is uh, sometimes described as uh, aniseed, sometimes almondy. So this was the word Carrie was looking for, I think, the pea kumarin. Okay. I'm not pretty certain, but uh, it would be my call. All right. So I think what we've figured out is a 100% following our rules that we teach at Wild Food UK, we can 100% say that this is an edible mushroom. We can agree on Absolutely, that. Absolutely, yes. Start. What's your thoughts on the horse mushroom, which we think this is? I think it's fantastic. Um, I think that uh, in terms of agriculture, we've done ourselves out of a much more, a much more superior species by cultivating um oh, we should have forest. cultivated this instead of the absolutely bisporus. i yeah. um I, I think we're, we're doing ourselves out of a favor here it is um, tastier isn't it so it's whilst, just nicer as a my if you are a mycologist you know the answer of well it could be x y or z um isn't going to satisfy the mycologist but for the forager we can satisfactorily say that that is going to come home with us for dinner 100 percent it's a very, very tasty mushroom. All of these big agaricus mushrooms that are edible are really tasty. The, the crocodilinus, I'm not sure if I've ever eaten the, uh, what was it called again, Attila? Osicanus. Osicanus. Uh, I've certainly eaten the arvensis and the wood mushroom can get quite big as well with a similar flavor. They are all lovely. And to me, they're all better than, uh, than shop-bought mushrooms. But the truth is, identifying them to species is pretty difficult. Um, don't be ashamed if all you can say is, yes, that is an, agaric an agaricus mushroom that is edible. Because believe me, you've got three professionals in the field right now looking at these huge mushrooms, which, you know, people would think must be nice and easy to identify, but to species, they're not. Um, now the rain has started, so we'll wrap up pretty quickly. I'm we'll take these book. home. Save Attila's book. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And uh, yeah, the, uh, the point is, um, we get a lot of photos sent to us at this time of year by people with um, uh, the hope that we can ID agaricus mushrooms by a photo. We can't, so please do a little bit of homework for yourself before you send us photos of mushrooms like this. Because what you really need to know to figure out whether they're edible is just what color they stain and how they smell. 
and identifying them to species is just something that is pretty much impossible from a photo. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and uh, we're gonna enjoy this mushroom and now I'm gonna get out of the rain. So if you wanna find out more, come on one of our courses or go to wildfooduk.com.